Good afternoon and welcome into Mud's Closet. This is Miriam, your manicured gardener, and today I'm going to be starting some seeds and I'm really very excited about them. To start with, I enjoy this process immensely. So I'm having some tea. I'm, I'm sipping on Harney and Sun Chinese Flower, which is a green tea that has orange peel and marigolds and rosebuds. It's a sachet, so it's not loose leaf, but that is a beautiful sachet. Uh, and you can see there's enough room for it to unfurl. Uh, I'll put a link below. Um, if you buy anything from Harney through that link, you'll get a little uh, coupon, and I'll get a little coupon. So uh, if you're interested, I hope you use it. Um, one tip I'll give you about green tea is that it's better if you brew it before the water boils. Uh, boiling water can scorch green tea and it changes um, its quality. I'm going to start some cauliflower, kohlrabi, kale, cabbages, some different things today and a couple of new things to me today. Uh, it's March 1st, I'm in zone 5, so if I have a four to six weeks head start on these things, that means the middle of April, when there's still really quite a chance in my area of frost or snow, um, I can still turn up a bit of the garden, use a floating row cover, and get an earlier harvest. So that's what I'm going to do. What I started with was um, creating a little map just so I would have a record of what I've planted and the date that I planted it. And here in the corner of my map, I just have drawn a little dot. And so what I'm going to do is use a craft stick or a popsicle stick, and that's going to go there so I'll know which direction my map goes. These things are all reused from last year. I did do a bleach rinse on them, and um, I, I think they're going to be fine. I'm starting. Um, First, with a seed starting mix that, um, that I have here. And you don't really have to have a seed starting mix. You can make your own or use whatever you'd like. But this is the one that I'm using. It's Jiffy um, Natural and Organic Seed Starting Mix. Our farm store has it. I had this from last year. I have like two or three half um, bags that are open. so. I really am just trying to use up some of what I have. So uh, because the bag was open for a year, it was very dry. So I've moistened it and I'm just going to um, start filling my tray. And I have to tell you, it's been a winter to remember with the quantity of snow and cold that we've had so that I'm starting some of this stuff is bringing me a great <laughs> deal of joy. Um, one of the things that I have begun doing differently than I have in past years is that it is not my intention to use a plastic dome with this. What I really uh, probably will do is just some dampened newspaper for the first maybe five, four or five days till, till things sprout and then um, and then I'll just let them be at the, um, on the growing shelf. And the, the point of that really is that um, I don't want mold and things like that. And so I'm going to do what I can to avoid it. So I've, I've filled these. I haven't um, really packed them. I'm going to just take and just a little bit give them a press. The important thing to have happen here next is that um, the seeds make contact with the soil uh, and that the soil, these for all of these, the soil needs to cover them. What usually happens to me with, um, I'm going to actually do with my other hand. I'm just going to put maybe three or four seeds to start with in each of these cells. Now usually I plant really, really heavy. And the reason that I do that is that sometimes I have seeds from previous years and I'm concerned that they're 
not going to germinate properly. And what happens is I pack them, you know, a lot of seeds into each cell and all of them germinate and then they're too tight to really do anything with. So I'm restraining myself. The first three cells that I planted were a purple Vienna kohlrabi. And um, last year I had some good results with kohlrabi, but not great because I think I started them a little bit too late outside and it got too hot. What I learned was um, that I really like the kohlrabi leaves too. So that was not a total loss, but I do really want the bulbs. I'm just gonna put that stick in there to denote that that's the point where my map starts. So the first three are purple kohlrabi. The second three down here are cauliflower snowball Y. I've not had good luck with um, cauliflower. Um, so I'm gonna try it again and we'll see what happens if I can keep everything cool. Um, not too cool, but not too hot under the floating roll cover. The next thing that I'm gonna plant, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, Kailan. Um, it's Chinese um, flowering kale. This is a botanical interest. Um, I've seen it from a lot of different brands, so um, I'm, I would think all of them are, are similar. Um, but this again is more of a cool weather crop, so I'm going to plant three cells of that with just three or four seeds in each one. And we do a lot of greens and we really like um, the Asian and Indian and Middle Eastern spice palette and so those um, go well really with a lot of greens. Uh, next, this is new for me and I'm so excited about it from Baker Creek Seeds. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that. It's a cabbage, Violacio de Varona, we're gonna say, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong. One of the things that I love about Baker Creek, there's a lot of seeds in there, and I have found their seeds do keep well from year to year. The only thing, actually, of any brand of seed that I found that doesn't last well from year to year are onions. So, um, so I don't feel like I have to use all of these. And again, I'm following the map that I have here um, on the side of the table, it's probably not in the view of the camera, but just so that I keep things um, in the right space. Um, what was appealing to me about this cabbage was that it's green with red stems, and sometimes it's just neat to have a different um, variety of something. We love cabbage um, in a whole lot of different ways. And again, just three or four. I can, as they start growing, we can separate them and um, I intend to do some succession planting. In other words, the, um, uh, in the two weeks I'll probably start another tray like this and then through the summer do the same, starting them outside so we have a continual uh, crop. This is um, white kohlrabi. These seeds are um, very inexpensive, and I will be doing a um, video shortly on um, where to get seeds and what kinds I like. I'm going to do a whole row of white kohlrabi. Because like I say, we really we really enjoy that. This seed packet didn't really have a ton of seeds in it. It didn't look to be a ton, but you know what? It's a whole row's worth, and that's exciting. And this is just a standard um, early white Vienna. Again, here is the package. Next, we're going to do this early golden acre. I find it fascinating that for a quarter and some effort, um, we're going to get some good food. I love that. And again, I'm going to do a whole row of this. Again, just, just a sprinkle of three or four seeds. 
a lot of people say just put one seed per cell that's fine I, I you know try a lot of different ways and do whatever you think works best for you the important thing to me about gardening is that you enjoy it and one of the things that I love most about it is that every year I learn something new and that to me is a profound experience the fifth row or next to last row that I'm going to do is this a botanical interests um, premier kale blend it has six types of kale uh, I don't know if it tells me exactly which ones it does oh five delicious kales dwarf blue curled improved dwarf Siberian uh, Lakinato premier and red Russian and so this, um, I grew this last year, and boy, did we enjoy it. And I froze a good quantity of it. We're still eating. Uh, and that's something else to pay attention to when you're deciding how much to plant. I suspect that I probably have, if we have it two or three times a week, which we do, um, enough for maybe another four or five weeks in the freezer. And hopefully by then, we'll be having some of this fresh stuff. The last row is, again, some things that I'm pretty excited about. They're new to me this year from Baker, Baker Creek. This um, Aurora Mist Mixed Auric is uh, leafy. They say green, but there are different colors. I'm going to do three cells of this. This is, um, from what I've been reading, it's better in warm weather. It's a good warm weather green, uh, even though it's not green. It's related to lamb's quarters, which we have a lot of wild. And, you know, sometimes we do uh, just go out there and pick the quote unquote weeds and make them for dinner. These seeds are very unique. They look a little bit like a thicker tomato seed. And I'm just going to put maybe two or three in each cell. And we'll see what happens. I, I dropped one someplace. Sometimes what happens, the summers get so hot that um, most of the greens we lose, but trying some warmer weather ones. This is wild zatar. This is what I'm going to put in the last um, three cells. I'm so excited about this. These seeds were, by my standard, a little bit expensive. I got a package for me and a package for my mom. These seeds are uh, pelleted, they're called, or coated. And you can see that you can see them very easily. And a lot of times manufacturers do this because the seeds are so small, this makes them a little easier to manage. And I grew up um, on za'atar that we used to put on bread um, with olive oil. Um, this is a type of oregano that my mom had in Lebanon. And she said it's so um, tender and delicious and mild that it's almost like um, lettuce in the salad. You have it like lettuce in the salad. So we're pretty excited to have found that. That's another um, Baker Creek uh, seed. And now I'm just going to top these all off. Most of them say, you know, between a quarter, just a quarter of an inch down, and that's about what I have. And then again, instead of a plastic dome, I'll be covering these with dampened newspaper and putting them on the grow shelf. The grow shelf has some lights and a heat source. And as we go, I'll do some periodic updates to show how they're doing. But that's really all that there is to it. It's enjoyable. It makes me think of spring after this hard winter, although I, I, I really don't mind winter. I don't want these packed down tightly because when you think about that, little seed's got to 
have enough juice to poke through. Um, I don't want it packed tightly, but I also need the soil to have contact with the seed. Um, I will water everything and top them with newspaper and then that's it and we're good to go. I honestly will probably do this again in two weeks with much the same type of um, seed so that I have various types of seeds in um, at the times that I want them and then in maybe a month I'll start the peppers sweet and hot and then in about six weeks I'll be starting the tomatoes. So that gives me 10 weeks head start on the peppers and eight weeks head start on the tomatoes before they can go out in the middle of May. Leave me a question if you've got one. Tell me what you're starting in your area. Ask a question if you've got it. Um, give it the video a like if you enjoy it. If you want to see more, subscribe. And if you feel like this video has value, share it with your friends. Thanks a lot for watching.